Greetings and welcome to our video service for the 10th Sunday after Pentecost, coming to you from Trinity Episcopal Church in Lumberton, North Carolina. service starts on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Alleluia! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy that with you as our ruler and God, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who is to come to the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark. And Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Well, I think today's colic really uh, gets to the heart of the matter here. It reads, O God, the protector of all who trust in you, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and God, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. And with these words, we pray that we might pass through this temporal realm in which we live without losing sight of the eternal realm. In other words, we pray to live out our earthly lives without forgetting the truths of the eternal life, those things that have always been and will be forever. We might think of it this way, as we walk the earth, we pray for the promise of heaven to be always fixed in our sight. This is not to say that we should focus on eternal things as some sort of incentive. I don't think we were created to trudge through this life motivated only by the promise of a heavenly reward as if we were sort of horses chasing a carrot. But rather we pray to remember things eternal because they can give us a much needed perspective on this life, 
eternal thing, the things of God and of Jesus, of the religious and the spiritual. Remind us that the lives we live day to day, week to week, and year to year, are but the blink of an eye in the sight of God, who is everlasting to everlasting. One of the virtues of this eternal perspective is that it keeps us aware of the fact that God is God and we are not. God's ways are not our ways, but there just might be a different way to respond to our present circumstances or look at future possibilities differently than the way we typically do. I think this is the idea, perhaps behind those popular 90s era bracelets that asked, what would Jesus do? Do you remember those? I do. And implicit in the question is the reminder that Jesus' eternal perspective is worth thinking about, contemplating. So when we pray that we may pass through things temporal without losing sight of things eternal, we're, we're asking God to keep us mindful of the very thing that God did and still does in Jesus Christ. That is, God enters this realm, sanctifies it, and reminds us that the ways of this world won't get the last word. And we need a reminder of that. So often aspects of the temporal world can bring us down, whether it's the divisiveness of partisan politics or the crassness of a co-worker, maybe even the problem of a backed up sewer line. Through any and all of the messiness of day-to-day -day living, our relationship with Jesus makes it possible for us to see that from an eternal perspective now and to glimpse the kingdom now and to walk in eternal life today is our goal. This is what God has always been doing. In the wisdom spoken through the prophets, in the Psalms, sung by the congregations of the faithful and the Red Sea waters lifted at the hand of Moses, in the rainbow that Noah saw set in the clouds, in the sacred covenant that was made with Abraham, in the creation that was fashioned from the formless void. All of these things are signs that God has since before time began been showing us that are glimpses of eternity. And we may not be firsthand witnesses of signs as big as some of these, but we do witness things every day that are just as important. Perhaps if you've ever known someone who has overcome an addiction or taken steps toward forgiving someone who has deeply wronged them or even eventually come to a place of peace after the loss of a loved one, then you have seen the inbreaking of God's eternal perspective at work in our temporal world. And it doesn't only happen in dramatic ways. You can participate in eternal life by reading a scripture or praying the Psalms or looking for God's activity in the world around you. And don't worry. Even when you lose sight of things eternal, as we all do from time to time, God will find a way to reach toward you in covenant loyalty as if to say, I am here and I will never go away. No matter what you do, no matter what you say, I am in this for keeps. You just have to keep an eye out for the Lord. You just have to remember 
that the one who formed you in your mother's womb, who knew you even before you were a twinkle in someone's eye, that Lord is constantly calling you to an eternal relationship, even in the midst of this temporal world. This eternal relationship is not a testament to something old or new, but to the one thing that is constant, the faithfulness of a God who never ceases to work the wonders of eternity. And so we pray to behold those very wonders by recounting not only what God has done in the past, but what God is doing today. Have you seen any of these things? Let you. Maybe you have heard the story about the man who was extremely suspicious, extremely leery of doing too much for other people. He said things like, if you give other, these people too many handouts, they'll get used to it and take advantage and be back for more before you know it. One Sunday, some of his friends were able to convince him to come along with them as they made their monthly visit to a large downtown parish. And there they helped serve a free community meal. As they arrived, he saw hundreds of people that were lined up around the block and waiting. And he said, what difference will one lunch make? Most of them will still have to sleep outside tonight. Despite his initial attitude, his friends got him to go back again and again. And after they had taken him four or five times, he got to know a few of these people who remembered his name. But it wasn't until he began to remember their names that he was finally able to understand the difference that God was making in that place. And it was a difference that had very little to do with the lumpy mashed potatoes or the weak lemonade and much more to do with being named and claimed and with being called into relationship with being there for someone you didn't even know needed you. It was a difference the man finally realized that had to do with his willingness to begin to take an eternal perspective in the midst of a temporal world. Because it's easy to say things like, well, my salary can never buy enough food for all these people, or there's a kid here with a couple of loaves of bread, but I don't know what good it's going to do in a crowd this big. But that kind of attitude isn't going to help us see through a lens of eternity. We can do that only if we show up and faithfully start passing out what's there. Once everyone's had enough, we just might find that we are glimpsing the kingdom of heaven. And not only that, but we'll be able to make a nice meal with what's left over. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Alleluia, alleluia, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.